Hey everyone, it's Sam McKay from Enterprise DNA. Going to go through a really cool example here that all came from a question from the Enterprise DNA support forum. So I'll just jump to it quickly. Where there was a, a question in terms of how can you project a current trend? How can you project a current trend forward continuously? So you might have, say, a uh, a grouping like a quarter, a quarter where y you you have some results uh, that you feel you want to project forward for each different quarter going forward. So it could be you know you you might have like a sales period every quarter or, or something of that nature, right? And it's really interesting scenario and found a solution um, that I think could be applied in a number of different ways, right? And so this is this is based on say projecting a quarter, but you could project anything continuously going forward using a similar technique. Just of, of note, if you do actually want support, um, like uh, like on this particular unique scenario, you can um, through Enterprise DNA. All you have to do to access the support form is is upgrade to um, the membership uh, package there. So there's more details on membership be below in the description if you want to learn more. Now, in terms of how this one was solved, let's walk through it, okay? Because I think it's um, there's lots of great techniques actually, lots of great techniques uh, to actually find discover this and, uh, and and apply it inside of um, inside of your your reports now the very first thing so let's have a look at this table first so I'll just blow it up a little bit here we'll go up. so all we're doing here is we're initially looking at total sales but we need to somehow somehow understand a, uh, which day it is in a particular quarter or sort of so any any day in a particular of a um, month and year what day is that in a particular quarter and so I've called that quarter day here so let's just jump back to the date table many of you probably are use, utilizing the date table code that uh, that I've put out through enterprise DNA and so this is basically just a table derived from that now let's come along to this particular column here quarter day now how do we actually work this out because remember in any particular quarter in the future we want to go back go back and look at a particular result in a, a on a particular day in a quarter and project that exact number every single quarter right and so what we need to do is we need to find out the quarter days and to do that all I've done is I've gone find that any particular date so so on any row this is just going to equal the date minus the start of quarter so the very first day in that quarter and then add one and then uh, as we go down this particular uh, column here you'll see that it continues to um, go all the way up until about 90 to 92 uh, and then it goes back to one uh, at the very first start at the start of the next quarter and so on and so forth so now that we have calculated that number we need to decide okay well what particular time frame what particular time frame do we then want to project forward okay and so what I've done here is I've created a quarterly forecast quarterly forecast here and within this filter function I've set I've 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 hard coded here but you could you, you could make this dynamic there's no there's no reason why this couldn't be dynamic in, in terms of these numbers but I've hard coded them here to show you how uh, you know if you wanted to um, set a very particular time window this is how you would actually uh, this is how you would actually set it and so what I've done inside the filter function is I've removed all filters from dates initially and then I've reapplied them inside of here to a very specific time frame and so in this case we're looking at 2015 and quarter three right 2015 and quarter three and the very same day of, of, of a particular quarter right so this min quarter day this actually evaluates to um, the quarter day for every single day as we move through um, any month in, into the future and evaluates the correct quarter day. So on any particular day in the future, we are always jumping back to 2015 quarter three and that specific quarter day. And so with this particular formula, that formula, that's how we actually then project this forecast. This forecast is just continually repeated. This is a, this is a repeated forecast over and over and over and over and over, and over again in each individual quarter. So I think oh, this is a really cool technique, right? So it's not like you have to, um, you know, in the past I've showcased forecasting a few times um, and uh, and and how you can project numbers forward. Uh, in that case, we took a wider time frame here, right? But in this, this is changing it up a little bit. And we're saying in, instead of um, just repeating historic numbers, we're actually looking at a very uh, specific time frame and then looking at the, the trend or forecasting the trend within that time frame and then just projecting it continuously forward. 
So hopefully you can see how you could use this and you could use this and you can, can utilize this in a number of different ways, right? Down here, I'm actually evaluating um, it versus sales. So you might want to improve this a little bit. Obviously, it's a bit busy and you can't really see um, see too much there. But this is certainly one um, way you can use it from a comparison perspective. Another way you could use this, which is really, really interesting, is that instead of going total sales, which is quite granular, well, there's no reason why you cannot put a moving average uh, measure inside of here. So you'd first of all calculate moving average of, of a specific time frame and then just continually project that out by utilizing exactly the same context here but changing the measure inside of here and then that's going to instead of um, you know instead of just the sales it can it could project anything out and that's where measure branching comes in in terms of you go and calculate the initial core measures and then implement them inside of this pattern and then um, you know very quickly you can see lots of different results um, over, uh, applied to the same technique. Also, another thing you can do is factors. So you can add factors to these particular results, which I think is really powerful. So instead of, so um, instead of, say, just projecting um, these numbers forward, well, you could also add a percentage to it, right? So you could just go one point, say one two, say we're going to increase by twelve percent. Well, all you have to do is uh, add add factors on like that, add percentages on like that, and that's going to, um, you know, that's going to change up the results for you in, in that way, shape, or form as well. So I think there's, and, and look, you could take this even further. There's lots of ways you can take it, but I just wanted to show you the example because I thought it was a really interesting one that popped up through the support forum and um, the enterprise DNA support forum um, that I think could be applied in many, many different ways. So I'm hoping that you can find a, um, if this actually solves a solution that you might be looking for or uh, it gets you thinking about how you can apply you know, these sort of techniques to your, to your own calculations. Okay, if you like the content, uh, certainly throw the video a like, really appreciate it. And, uh, and and also don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. Uh, TV. There's lots of, seriously lots of amazing Power BI content to come uh, and really wants you to get that as soon as it comes out. All the best. Uh, talk to you soon.